New Thinking Aloud is presented by the California Institute for Human Science, Mind Body Spirit University, a leader in fully accredited in person and online U.S. college degree programs in the topics we cover here. Visit their website at cihs.edu. Thinking Aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm also Jeffrey Mishlove. You can think of me as an alter ego and a conversation partner. For those of you who are regular viewers of the New Thinking Aloud channel and have even watched the introduction that I first recorded back in 2015, you will know that one of my life's great ambitions has been the creation of ongoing graduate-level education in parapsychology along the lines that I originally envisioned when I created my own individual interdisciplinary doctoral major in parapsychology at the University of California at Berkeley, from which I matriculated in 1980. Now, 44 years later, I can say with great pride and satisfaction that some important first steps have been taken to realize this dream at the California Institute for Human Science, located in the San Diego area. CIHS, of course, is also a distant learning school with students from all over the world, some of whom come to the San Diego area for actual in-person classes on their beautiful campus, and other courses are offered online. And I'm extremely happy to say that if you go to the CIHS website, which is cihs.edu, you will see that a master's degree in psychology with a concentration in parapsychology is now one of the offerings. And in addition, a doctoral degree in psychology with a concentration in integral, transpersonal, and positive psychology and a specialization in parapsychology is also one of the offerings. And we're very hopeful that we will be expanding these offerings even further in the future. Let me talk a little bit about what these programs entail. If you were to enroll at the master's degree level, and I might just say parenthetically, CIHS is one of the most affordable graduate schools around that is fully accredited by the Western Association for Schools and Colleges. If you were to enroll in the master's degree program, you would be required to take the core curriculum, which includes 16 units on such topics as scholarly writing, quantitative research, basic psychology courses in cognitive psychology, personality psychology, the history and systems of psychology, and then some parapsychology courses, including an introduction to parapsychology, a special course in remote viewing. And we're debating at this point whether the master's degree students will be taking the history of psychical research and parapsychology, psychical research being the discipline going back into the 1800s that really preceded parapsychology and is largely focused on the question of survival of consciousness after death? Or will we offer a course on applied practical applications of parapsychology. In any case, if you move on to the graduate level program, your master's degree courses will count towards 24 units of parapsychology 
courses required for that specialization, in addition to another 24 units of courses on integrative, positive, and transpersonal psychology, which are exactly the branches of psychology that you want to be familiar with as you explore parapsychology. And we'll have additional courses of a parapsychological nature there as well. Now, I personally plan to be actively involved in these parapsychology programs, but you should know that the psychology department at CIHS is headed by Glenn Hartilius, who has been interviewed on New Thinking Aloud, is one of the foremost practitioners and researchers in the field of transpersonal psychology. He is working alongside of Farnaz Karomi, who is, amongst other things, a Sufi scholar. Let me talk a little bit about the other parapsychology faculty. Working very closely with me to direct this program will be Callum Cooper. Cal holds two doctoral degrees. He is currently supervising doctoral level students at the University of Northampton in the United Kingdom. And for what it's worth, parapsychology in the United Kingdom is being offered, I believe, in about a dozen different universities there. This new program at the California Institute for Human Science is the first, to my knowledge, degree awarding, accredited, graduate level college program in parapsychology since the 1980s when there was a master's degree program at John F. Kennedy University in Orinda, California, where I was then on the faculty. So this is a huge breakthrough for parapsychology in the United States. And I can tell you that the entire parapsychological community worldwide is watching this program and supporting this program and will provide resources and encouragement for students because it's been a long time coming. A remote viewing course will be offered by Deborah Lynn Katz, who has, for the last five years, served as president of the International Remote Viewing Association. Deborah had a career as a psychic reader even before she got into remote viewing. She is the author of many books on awakening your psychic potential and in the practical applications of remote viewing. She has designed the course in a unique way. It will include a study of the history of remote viewing going back to the 1970s when the early research was being done under the auspices of the CIA and the U.S. military. She will look at how different laboratories have approached remote viewing. There are many different protocols and styles of research, and she'll take the students through them, both in a scholarly way, but also experientially. It's a hands-on course, a regular four-unit academic course, and students will gain an enormous amount of hands-on experience as viewers, as judges, as monitors in the remote viewing context. We're very excited to be offering this course, and it embodies our philosophy of a new way of approaching parapsychology, not simply as a branch of experimental psychology, which I think it would be fair to say that's the approach initiated in the 1930s by J.B. Rhine at Duke University, but a program that encompasses the experience of psi, that's the word parapsychologists use for all kinds of psychic functioning, whether it's precognition, retrocognition, telepathy, clairvoyance, remote viewing, which is another name for clairvoyance, or psychokinesis. 
One, I think, could even include under the rubric of Psy the question of survival after death because parapsychologists are very interested in that. But in this program, we're also, because it incorporates transpersonal psychology, it involves an acute awareness of the world's spiritual traditions and methodologies, such things as meditation and yoga and other forms of spiritual practice and disciplines that go back thousands of years and have been understood in various esoteric communities as fostering or enabling or at least being conducive to psychic functioning. Another one of the courses that will be offered at the graduate level is a course on clinical parapsychology being offered by Paul Leslie, who is a brilliant clinical practitioner based in South Carolina, very open to psychic functioning. Paul is the author of several books about the magic of a psychotherapy session using his specialty, Ericksonian hypnosis. But he's also written about what he calls the shadows that can appear in the session, spontaneous examples of telepathy and other forms of paranormal experience that can occur right in the context of doing psychotherapeutic work, often unexpected by either the client or the therapist. This is something that you won't learn about in most psychotherapy programs, but it's clinical parapsychology is becoming an important and more recognized field. And you can listen to several interviews with Paul on the New Thinking Aloud channel, incidentally. Cal Cooper, who is working with me and will be teaching courses on uh, the basic introduction to parapsychology, courses on postmortem survival. I expect Cal to be actively involved in the applied practical applications course. I've mentioned previously he possesses two doctoral degrees and is already supervising doctoral level students in the United Kingdom. He's the author of some fascinating field studies, including the remarkable book, Telephone Calls from the Dead. It may seem unbelievable to you, but actually he builds upon the work of my late cousin, D. Scott Rogo, who back in, I think it must have been the 1970s or 80s, wrote his book, an earlier work called Phone Calls from the Dead. And believe it or not, there are many dozens of well-authenticated cases of conversations mediated by the telephone between deceased individuals and the living. You know, when you get into parapsychology, one of the things you'll learn, of course, is a very controversial field. I'm sad to report that uh, Wikipedia refers to parapsychology as a pseudoscience, which is in a way absurd. Since 1969, the Parapsychological Association, the professional organization of parapsychologists, has been an affiliate organization of the American Academy for the Advancement of Science. This occurred after lengthy discussion and a vote of uh, the board and uh, constituent members of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and an acknowledgement that the methods used by parapsychologists follow the scientific protocol. So, we consider parapsychology as a science. But to be honest, it's more than a science, just like athletics, for example. There's a scientific aspect to it and there's a practical aspect to it, an application. There's theoretical work going on and field observations, which has really been my path largely. But our courses will cover all of these things. The history of parapsychology course is being offered by Nan Zingroni. Nan went on to get her doctoral degree in the parapsychology program at the University of Edinburgh. She has a long track record as an instructor of courses in many aspects of parapsychology. She is the widow of the late 
Carlos Alvarado, who is one of the foremost historians of parapsychology, and she shared with him that passion for the history. And she's offering the history course going back to 1800 and up to 1940, the early history of psychical research and parapsychology. Nan also, incidentally, is a past president of the Parapsychological Association. In addition to these faculty members, we have another dozen or more people who are signed up to participate as instructors in the parapsychology program who will be working with students individually on dissertation and thesis projects and laboratory work. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's fair to say that the entire worldwide parapsychology community is supportive of this program. It's important to mention that the California Institute for Human Science has a, another track, not the psychology track, it's called the Noetic Sciences track, in which they're exploring many other areas of the paranormal. It could be Bigfoot, it could be spirit guides, it could be UFOs and contact with non-human intelligence. Those courses are being offered through the Noetic Sciences program at CIHS. And of course, parapsychology students will be able to take any of the electives that are offered in uh, Noetic Sciences, Transpersonal Psychology, and uh, the other clinical psychology tracks as well. People often ask, well, what am I going to do with a degree in parapsychology? And I have to admit, it's not like getting a degree in mathematics or engineering or the biological sciences where you can expect a high paying job waiting for you as soon as you get your degree. Parapsychology is a controversial science. There are many people today in academia who don't believe that it is a valid field. Employment opportunities do exist, but they're few. One might even say they're rare. So it's going to be up to graduates in this program to find their own way, which is one of the reasons why at CIHS we have a philosophy of preparing students for careers as public intellectuals, which is what I basically had to do my entire life after I got a doctoral degree in parapsychology from Berkeley. This means learning how to write grant proposals. It means understanding academic writing and popular writing. It means learning how to be a public speaker and a good presenter. The truth of the matter is that there's an enormous hunger in the population at large for information, valid information about the paranormal. 70% of the population claim to have actually had paranormal experiences. And my best evaluation of the research in parapsychology suggests that psychic functioning is a skill open to every human being, anyone who is conscious, by virtue of being a conscious, sentient person, has the potential for psychic functioning. So I think the possibilities are sky high for students who want to devote themselves to this, which I regard as the most fascinating of all fields. And if you're such a person, I encourage you to check out the website of the California Institute for Human Science. And if you're thinking of enrolling, reach out to me personally. I'll be happy to work with you. I am so excited about this program and my ability to pass on to a new generation the wonderful benefits that I have learned and gained from a lifetime of study in the paranormal and parapsychology. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being with me. And thank you for being with me too. Book 
three in the new Thinking Aloud dialogue series is UFOs and UAP, Are We Really Alone? Now available on Amazon. You can now download a free PDF copy of Issue 7 of the New Thinking Aloud magazine or order a beautiful printed copy.